Yo, what's up guys? Quick strategy video. I'm going to be taking you through a lot of picks that I ended up being on. So let's just go ahead. Let's get into it. My first play is Jay Heath over three rebounds on prize picks. So I love this play. This is my favorite play of the night. So take a look right here. Prize picks has Heath's line at three. Then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six sports books, all setting his line at three and a half. So prize picks is at three, and then you have six data points, and there's not much juice, right? It's not like the markets are heavily favoring the under three and a half rebounds for Heath. There's slight juice, minus 120 on DraftKings. There's not a ton of juice towards the under. So you have prize picks at three, then you have six data points all telling you, yeah, this line should be at three and a half, and there shouldn't even be much juice. So prize picks is too low, right? They're far below the market. They're half a rebound below the market so we want to take the over three right prize pick should have their line at three and a half but they're screwing up and giving us value their line is too low at three so we want to take the over right and you may not think like getting heath over three rebounds is a big deal but look at this in three of his last four games heath has had exactly three rebounds so think about it we're getting over three rebounds right in this prize picks entry if he has three rebounds we're gonna push anyone who bet his over on a sports book would lose right in three out of the past four games he's had three rebounds so if you bet over three and a half on the books you would have lost if you bet over three on prize picks you would have pushed right you would have pushed your bet would have been a tie right so a five pick flex or a six pick flex will go down a leg so a five pick flex on prize picks We'll go down to be a four pick flex if you push a leg in a parlay a five leg parlay becomes a four leg parlay right you tie so one leg just goes away it's like you never placed it right so long story short this play is incredible value this is finding an edge i mean i know it doesn't sound sexy but like literally finding threes when all the books are at three and a half this is how you crush prize picks and make money long term right because we're finding an edge and we're finding plays where literally three out of the past four games we would have pushed anyone else betting is over, over three and a half, right? On a sports book, they would have lost. So these extra, you know, points in value, these half points in value, it makes all the difference as a sharp better. I mean, no one's going to win every bet, right? Slow and steady wins the race. It's all about finding a verifiable edge and winning long term. So anyways, let's keep going. Then I have a bunch of plays from the Odds Jam positive expected value tool. So I love this tool, obviously a very popular tool, you know, kind of on odds jam. You can see there's some plays on Bovada, but there's also a tennis play as well as an NHL play. So a lot of different bets out there. Um, bet in green is what you want to place. That's the profitable play. So honestly, why don't we just make a play together right now while we're doing this? So we can go ahead and we can go back here and I can say, okay, let me reuse some of these players. So the first play was right here, right? Zevrev under 23 and a half total game. So I locked this in. Then we want Burns over, right? We'll skip Jarvis over. These two players are from the same game. So typically, like if there's two players from the same game, you want to be a little more careful because if you think about it, if Brent Burns goes over two and a half shots on goal, then Seth Jarvis is probably maybe less likely to take shots, right? His line's also at two and a half. It's not like every player can go over their shot on goal line, right? Usually half of the players go over, half go under. So maybe a little bit of correlation. Like sometimes when you're, long story short, when you're playing players from the same game, you want to be a little careful. Like it doesn't make a lot of sense, for example, to take Patrick Mahomes over in passing yards and Travis Kelsey under in receiving yards on prize picks. If Mahomes throws over his passing yards line, then Kelsey, you know, is very likely as his main target to also go over. So that's called positive correlation when bets are tied together, right? So it doesn't really matter when you're placing bets on different games, but when you're placing bets on the same game, I try in general, if I'm not sure about the correlation, to just pick the most profitable play from a given game. So we have Sagoon over, right? We have the under in this tennis match. So now we have two plays. I definitely want to keep this play on Jay Heath, right? So now we have um, one, two, three plays, so we can keep going. We can go over to, let's say, the low holds tool on Odds Jam, and let's find two more plays quickly. 
you know, here, all the sports books, why do we like this, right? All the books are juicing this around minus 150 on average. Maybe if you take an average, Bovada has this minus 160, Pinnacle minus 159. So you kind of have all these data points telling you where this line should be set. And we know on prize picks in a five flex, we're getting minus 119 odds, which is a really good value, right? We know on prize picks, a five flex, we've gone through the math, the payouts, how their payouts work. We know we're getting minus 119. You know, all the books are pricing it around, you know, freaking minus 130 to minus 160. Seems pretty good considering you're getting it at minus 119. So what's going on here? So here's just a big line discrepancy. Kevin Porter, you can see FanDuel has his under 14 and a half. They just ripped down to minus 160. DraftKings is still at minus 115. So some discrepancies in the market. So what we can do is the low holds tool, I like using. Um, it shows you line discrepancies, unlike the EV tool. So the EV tool is really cool because it will show you, you know, literally it will highlight for you the profitable bet. The low holds tool, it won't highlight for you the profitable bet. It will just show you bets that could be profitable. So it will just show you line discrepancies. So as an example, let me scroll, scroll, scroll. You know, we can go through some. So like here, for example, this, you know, is very different. This minus 119, we're getting minus 119 on prize picks, right? The over is plus 114 on FanDuel. So there's only five cents of width between these two sportsbook markets. So it's on the low hold tool. The low hold tool minimizes width between sportsbooks, but it's not like I'm rushing to bet this minus 119 on prize picks, considering FanDuel has this at minus 120 and Caesars at minus 125. Like they're so similar in terms of the odds. So, you know, usually you wanna look for clear market outliers like this, right? Here, every sportsbook has Tyler Sagoon, his over two and a half shots on goal, heavily favored, minus 130 to minus 160. All sports books are in unison. The over should be heavily favored. So jumping on it at minus 119 and a five flex is crazy value. Whereas here, there's a lot more disagreement kind of in the market. Like we're only getting one cent of improvement to FanDuel, six cents of improvement to Caesars. Doesn't seem particularly great, right? So we can continue to go through and hopefully find some profitable plays. Um, maybe not though. So we may need to refresh quickly and we'll try to find a couple more plays before the games kick off. Uh, Troy Terry. So I think I already bet on this. So we wanted Seth Jarvis, Nathan McKinnon over four and a half. So we have one, two, three plays. So maybe we head over to, let's head over to the screen. So what we can do now is now we're, now we're in hunting mode right this is freaking hunting mode so i'm trying to move quick you know great lines don't last forever a lot of these games are starting at you know in like 15 minutes so you kind of have a war against the clock right um as you get closer to game time you'll see a lot of lines moving so there's oftentimes you know pretty good betting opportunities and stuff like that but you got to move right you got to get a move on so let's go to player rebounds and then in the nhl we'll go to player shots on goal well, that will let these load up and hopefully we'll find some profitable plays. So here, you know, we're back on the screen again. This play on Milos Uzan seems decent, right? Prize Picks has his line at two and a half. Books also have his line at two and a half, but they all have his over pretty heavily favored. So that's an option. Here's one, Arthur Kaluma, right? So this line just moved, unfortunately. So now we're down to two. You know, we just have two. This Jay Heath play looks incredible. But, you know, long story short, maybe we won't be able to create another play very quickly. You know, lines are moving. So we can add this Jalen Cook play. So we can go back here. Then we can go here. And we want a Jalen Cook. So boom. One, two, three plays. Okay, cool. And then is there anything new, anything we want to jump on? Nothing really. I mean, we can check out hockey shots on goal. So again, I'm really just like using the screen to kind of hunt for discrepancies in the market. Like where does prize picks have a different line than underdog? Stuff like that, um, which is exactly the case for Brent Burns, right? Here, prize picks line is two and a half, underdog is three. Here, Seth Jarvis, right? Underdog has their line at three. Prize picks is at two and a half. Nathan McKinnon. 
here, Dougie Hamilton, he's three on prize picks. He's three and a half on underdog in all the sports books. So long story short, we're kind of using this to just look for discrepancies and nothing super, you know, nothing kind of to write home about right now. So maybe we just kind of skip over and we don't have a play. Um, or we're not able to lock in another play. It's kind of is what it is. Whatever. We have three plays. I'll try to find some more. But long story short, what I ended up going with is right here. Right? So here's the first play. First game starts at 5 p.m. Okay? And then here's the second play. So most of these plays are still available. Hopefully you guys are able to lock it in. Um, so I may go back here. And then I did like this play on Nick Honor. So now we have four plays. So what we could do is throw in a Nathan McKinnon or a Troy Terry. I mean, if we wanted to. So let's see if we're able to get Troy Terry. I already bet on him a bit, so I think I was getting a little limited on my max stake. But we can try it out. So now we have a five-pick flex. So we can throw 150 bucks on this. Will they take it? So you can see here, they're bringing up this max winnings on a single pick is $13,500. So I'm not sure if they're going to take more. So they're not going to take more on Troy Terry. So it's like, okay, that's a little annoying. So what I can do is I can go to the arbitrage tool and just kind of using all these tools, right? Odd jam, just kind of like, it shows you discrepancies. Oh my God. Uh, so let's go here. So this looks freaking insane, right? Isaiah Joe, under 15 half. So let's open up this. So let's get this ready. Right, Isaiah Joe, under 15 half. So this play, we want to be all over. Oh my God, books have his line at 13 half. So this is freaking crazy, right? Like, we want to go to NBA. But... We're going to want to hit the crap out of that. So we can also reuse this and we can replace burns with, let's say, you know, we want to diversify a bit. So I found this tool, found this play on the arbitrage tool. The arbitrage tool shows you crossed markets. So let's go here, right? And then I want Isaiah Joe. So I just hammered 400 to win four grand with Isaiah Joe under 15 half points and we want to find this guy Isaiah Joe his lines 13 and a half on the freaking sports books oh my god talk about a line discrepancy 15 half on prize picks 13 half on the sports books so we want to be all over this um so long story short here's the play I just locked in right so you can take screenshots whatever you want to do you know, fine with me. All over Nick Honor, all over Jay Heath, right? So what we can do now is if we want to diversify a bit, we can get rid of Heath. And then there was that other player. Um, from the game. So let's go back here. So now I want to go back to the low holds tool. And then I'm going to want to type in prize picks. There's also the option Tad McKinnon. But I already bet on his under on underdog. I got a better line on underdog. I think I got him under five on underdog. And now it's slightly positive EV on the four and a half. So I could middle it. But I mean, whatever. Like the profit margin so low. Um, I'll just end up finding another play. Hopefully pretty quickly. So we can take a look here right back at the EV tool and just be like, okay, like any line discrepancies that we may, so this Arthur Kaluma one over six and a half, that is what looked good, right? So, ooh, so what we can do is, well, it just ended up moving. So whatever, let me just drop this video. We'll call it a day and appreciate you guys.